Hello all, welcome back. In the previous two lectures, we were discussing about the derivation of unit hydrograph and also direct run of hydrograph based on linear system theory. We were making use of the principle of proportionality and principle of superposition for deriving the response of a catchment based on certain input rainfall data. Today let us understand those concepts in detail by solving some of the numerical examples. First example is to determine the drainage area. So, first let me read out the question. Determine the drainage area at the outlet of the catchment which has produced a triangular unit hydrograph having time base of 16 hours and peak discharge of 28 meter cube per second. We are having a catchment which has produced a runoff at the outlet. The details related to runoff is given to us that is represented by means of a triangular unit hydrograph. And the time base of the unit hydrograph is also given to us that is 16 hours. We need to find out the drainage area, the peak discharge is given to us. So, it is like this we are having a unit hydrograph represented by a triangle which is having a peak discharge of 28 meter cube per second and the time base is 16 hours. From this given data, we need to calculate the drainage area. How can we calculate it? Unit hydrograph is the response of the catchment for a unit rainfall that is 1 centimeter of rainfall which is acted on the catchment uniformly. If you are calculating the area under the curve, it will give you the volume corresponding to that particular rainfall. How much is the volume of water which is drained at the outlet of the catchment that can be obtained by taking the area under the curve. So, if you are having the volume of water which is drained at the outlet of the catchment that is representative of the area, that volume divided by the rainfall depth will be giving you the area of the catchment that is what we are going to do here. A unit hydrograph is a direct run of hydrograph for a rainfall of 1 centimeter effective rainfall. The runoff volume is equivalent to the rainfall volume due to 1 centimeter of effective rainfall that is after the deduction of initial abstractions from the total rainfall we are having an effective rainfall that is equivalent to 1 centimeter. So, the complete volume of water will be representing the volume of runoff. So, the runoff volume under UH is equal to the area under the unit hydrograph. Here the time base of the unit hydrograph is 16 hours that can be converted into seconds because the peak flow is given in meter cube per second. So, that is why we are converting it into seconds it will be coming out to be 57,600 seconds and we know runoff volume is equal to area under the unit hydrograph. Triangular unit hydrograph is the area under that triangular unit hydrograph will be representing the runoff volume. So, we know the formula for calculating area of triangle the time base is 57600 and the peak is 28 meter cube per second. So, half into base into height it will be coming out to be this much meter cube. So, rainfall volume will be 1 centimeter of effective rainfall multiplied by area. So, this rainfall volume and the runoff volume both are equal. This much of rainfall is producing runoff at the outlet. So, both should be equal. We can equate these volumes and we can find out the drainage area as 80.64 into 10 raised to 6 meter square it is equivalent to 80.64 kilometer square. This is the case with the unit hydrograph. The same principle can be applied to the case of direct run of hydrograph also. Now, we will move on to the second example 
derivation of unit hydrograph how to derive a unit hydrograph if we are having the stream flow data initially itself when explaining the theory related to unit hydrograph we have discussed about the data requirements for the derivation of unit hydrograph we need to have the details related to stream flow and also the corresponding effective rainfall effective rainfall should be chosen in such a way that it is uniformly distributed for that particular duration over the entire catchment so it is very difficult to identify such an effective rainfall so let us see how it can be done by with the help of this numerical example derive the unit hydrograph for a drainage basin of area 175 km square from the observed total runoff hydrograph given below the rainfall hydrograph ordinates are also given determine the duration of the hydrograph so you have been given the rainfall hydrograph and also the stream flow data so the rainfall hydrograph is given to you and the runoff hydrograph total runoff hydrograph is also given to you look at the data carefully that is i'm talking about the runoff data you can see that it is starting from 2 hours to 48 hours and the stream flow data is varying from 8 meter cube per second to 12 meter cube per second so you can understand that here it is not starting with zero we are having the rainfall hydrograph given to us and from that we need to determine the effective rainfall and also while looking into the runoff data it is having contribution from base flow because before the rainfall itself there is some stream flow data present in the runoff hydrograph that is mainly because of the base flow so first what we need to do we need to deduct the base flow from the runoff hydrograph for getting the direct runoff hydrograph how to get the base flow base flow data will be either given to you or by looking into the runoff data you can understand what can be the possible base flow so here you look at the rainfall data it is starting at 2 hours here at 2 hours we are having stream flow so definitely at t is equal to 2 hour rainfall is starting response we cannot observe at 2 hours the response due to a rainfall at t is equal to 2 hours will be observed after that time only so this 8 meter cube per second is not the contribution from the rainfall so we can understand that this is the contribution coming from base flow then here you can see at the fourth hour there is a reduction in stream flow taking place that is base flow recession is taking place now look at the sixth hour you are having a stream flow of 12 meter cube per second so definitely you can understand that stream flow is un increasing so from the data you can understand that stream flow is uh, increasing from 6th hour up to that whatever flow was there it was from the base flow so here we are finalizing a base flow of 12 meter cube per second so stream flow 8 meter cube per second 7.5 meter cube per second at the time t is equal to 4 hours these we can conclude that coming from base flow and when time t is equal to 6 hours 12 meter cube per second so that is there is a slight increase from 7.5 to 12 meter cube per second so what we are doing that we are assuming that this 12 meter cube per second is the contribution from base flow that we need to deduct from the total stream flow in order to get the direct runoff so if in the question if the base flow is given to you that has to be detected so we will get direct runoff after detecting the base flow of 12 meter cube per second from the stream flow so you can understand that the response due to that particular effective rainfall is starting from 6th hour 
6 to 8 hours it is increasing 6 it is 0 and t is equal to 8 hours it is 108 when it comes to 48 hours again runoff is 0. So, this is representing the direct runoff at the outlet of the catchment. Now, we can calculate the volume of direct runoff. What is our aim? We are going to find out the unit hydrograph corresponding to this direct runoff hydrograph. So, we need to calculate the volume of runoff first. Why we are calculating? We need to have the understanding about the effective rainfall or the depth of the runoff which is produced at the outlet value. So, we are calculating sum of these direct runoff that is coming out to be 1705 meter cube per second. Why do we want to calculate the sum? Because our aim is to find out the volume of direct runoff. How can we get the volume of direct runoff? Volume of direct runoff can be obtained by taking the area under the curve. Here we are having the direct runoff hydrograph. Area under this direct runoff hydrograph will be giving you the volume of water. Volume of water corresponding to this direct runoff. That is for example, if I am drawing the direct runoff hydrograph like this. So, for example, let this be the direct runoff hydrograph and along the y axis it is the runoff in meter cube per second along the x axis it is the time time is in hours so you just multiply this area under the curve if you are taking this is divided into small small strips like this so each strip can be considered as a rectangle time varying from here it is starting from 2 4 6 that way but all those ordinates corresponding to 2 hours, 4 hours and all are 0 to starting from 6. So, 6 hour can be considered as 0. So, these areas small small strips can be considered as rectangle and you can calculate the total area under the curve by summing up the areas of each strip. How can we get the area of this strip? This multiplied by this depth. So, this is representing the ordinate of the DRH and this is representing the time. So, meter cube per second multiplied by time unit. We will be converting it into second. Here the x axis is in hours that will be converted it into second. So, meter cube per second multiplied by second it will be in meter cube. So, this area is representing the volume. That is why we are calculating the area under this runoff hydrograph. That area under this runoff hydrograph will be giving you the volume of water corresponding to this runoff at the outlet of the catchment. For carrying out the area calculation, we have taken the sum of these ordinates. Direct runoff ordinates at different different times are the sum of that we have taken and now we will multiply the sum of the ordinates with the time interval. Here the time interval is 2 hours. 2 hours need to be converted it into seconds. So, volume of direct runoff is given by 1705. What is 1705? It is the sum of ordinates of direct runoff multiplied by 2 hours into 60 into 60. That 2 hours is converted into seconds. So, it can be calculated as 1.228 into 10 to the power of 7 meter cube. This much volume of water is measured at the outlet of the watershed. The drainage area is given to you that is the catchment area is 175 kilometer square. We are having the volume of water drained at the outlet of the catchment and we are having the area contributing that flow. So, definitely corresponding runoff depth can be calculated by dividing the volume by the area of the catchment. So, that is depth of direct runoff can be obtained by dividing this volume of direct runoff with drainage area. So, that can be calculated as 0 0.0701 meters. It is approximately 
7.01 centimeters. So, the depth of direct runoff is 7.01 centimeters. What we have done? We have considered the given runoff data. By observing the data, we could understand that it is giving the storm hydrograph. We need to develop the direct runoff hydrograph. For that, we have identified the base flow contribution by comparing with the rainfall data. And that base flow is detected from the ordinates of the storm hydrograph in order to develop the direct runoff hydrograph. The area under the direct runoff hydrograph will be giving you the volume of water drained at the outlet of the catchment. Once volume of water which is drained at the outlet of the catchment is calculated, that divided by the catchment area will be giving you the depth of direct runoff. That is what we have calculated here as 7.01 centimeters. Now what we are going to do, we will be dividing each ordinate of direct runoff hydrograph with this direct runoff depth. That will be providing you the ordinates of unit hydrograph. So, here what principle we have applied? We have made use of the principle of proportionality. That is we are having the solution that multiplied with a certain constant value will also be the solution of the particular problem. So, here what we are going to do, we will be dividing the direct run of ordinates with this direct run of depth. So, that is given here in this column that is the unit hydrograph ordinates. So, each and every ordinate of direct run of hydrograph is divided by the direct run of depth to get the unit hydrograph ordinates. Here we have determined the unit hydrograph from the direct run of hydrograph. Initially, storm hydrograph is given to you. We have developed the DRH from that by finding out the direct run of depth and after dividing the ordinates, dividing each ordinate with the direct run of depth, we have found out the unit hydrograph. Now, what will be the duration of this unit hydrograph? Because the duration of the direct run of hydrograph is not given to us. The observed stream flow data is collected. Based on that, we have derived the unit hydrograph. We have been given the rainfall data. From that, we need to identify what will be the duration of the unit hydrograph which is developed now. The rainfall data is given to us. From this we need to calculate the intensity of rainfall. This you know already. So, rainfall intensity is calculated. The unit of this is centimeters per hour. Now, if you are plotting the rainfall hydrograph, it will be looking like this rainfall intensity along the y axis and time along the x axis. This is representing the total rainfall. Total rainfall depth is given to us. We need to first identify what is the effective rainfall? That effective rainfall can be obtained by detecting the abstractions, initial abstractions from the total rainfall. So, we need to first find out the technique for finding out the initial abstraction and after finding out the initial abstraction, we have to detect that from the rainfall data, total rainfall depth to get the effective rainfall. So, for that here we are going to make use of phi index method. We are having the total rainfall 20.5 centimeters. We will assume a phi index of 1 centimeters per hour. So, we can compute the runoff, estimated runoff or the direct runoff from this rainfall will be if you are assuming phi is equal to 1 centimeter per hour, all these rainfall pulses will be going as abstractions. Above this 1 centimeter per hour, whatever coming that will be contributing towards direct runoff. So, we will be having this is corresponding to 1.25, 2 is the time interval. So, 2 multiplied by 1.25 minus 1, that is 1 is our phi index plus 3.25 minus 1 plus 3.75 minus 1. So, we can compute the runoff as 
2 into 5.25 it is coming out to be 10.5 centimeters. So, if you are assuming a fine index value 1 centimeters per hour, we can compute the runoff at the outlet as 10.5 centimeters. But what is the value of runoff depth, direct runoff depth which we have computed in the previous slide based on the runoff volume that is equal to 7.01 centimeters. So, that is less than that of the estimated runoff depth based on fine index value. So, what we have to do? We have to change the assumed fine index value. 1 centimeter per hour is producing a runoff of 10.5 centimeters, which is more than that of the estimated value from the hydrograph. So, what we have to do? We have to reduce the estimated runoff depth. We need to get a less value of runoff. For that we need to increase the phi index value. We will increase the phi index value to 1.5 centimeters per hour. If phi index value is 1.5 centimeters per hour, all these pulses will be going as abstractions. Only these two pulses will be contributing runoff. So, we can compute the runoff depth 2 multiplied by 3.25 minus 1.5 plus 3.75 minus 1.5. So, it can be calculated as 8 centimeters. Again, it is high. Depth of direct runoff from DRH is 7.01 centimeter. So, again we need to find out, we need to iterate on the value corresponding to phi index. But we know depth of direct runoff is 7.01, here it is 8 centimeter. So, what we can do? We can assume that for a particular phi index, we can assume that for a particular phi index value. So, estimated runoff is 8 centimeter and the value corresponding to runoff depth from the DRH is 7.01 centimeter. So, these are approximately coming nearer to each other. So, we can fix the, we can fix the interval for phi index because there is not much difference between these runoff depth values or you have to go for identifying the interval first, then we need to find out the phi index. So, here approximately I can tell that the interval is correct, now we need to get the phi index value. So, what we can assume this excess rainfall is equivalent to direct runoff depth computed based on DRH. So, 2 multiplied by 3.25 minus 5 plus 3.75 minus 5 is equal to 7.01 we are taking. From this phi can be estimated as 1.75 centimeters per hour. So, it is coming out to be 1.75 centimeter because here when it was 1.5 centimeters it was coming out to be 8 centimeter. So, phi index value should be increased then only the estimated runoff depth will be reduced. That way we have found out the interval with which the phi index will be lying and we have equated it with 7.01 that is the direct runoff depth which is computed based on DRH and we found out the exact value corresponding to phi index. So, that is coming out to be 1.75 centimeters per hour. This is the value representing the initial abstractions. Now, above this what are the pulses which is contributing to effective rainfall? We are having these two, right? That is corresponding to 3.25 and 3.75 centimeters per hour of rainfall. So, there is not much difference even though actually based on the assumption under unit hydrograph, the rainfall should be uniformly distributed for the particular duration. Here initial 2 hours, it is uniformly distributed and again increased to 3.75 centimeters per hour. There is a difference of 0.5 centimeters per hour in the rainfall intensity. That much approximation is considerable. So, that is why we can assume that the effective rainfall which is producing a runoff depth of 7.01 is due to the, these two pulses.
pulses of effective rainfall. So, the derived unit hydrograph can be considered as a 4 hour unit hydrograph because this is of 2 hour pulse and this is also of 2 hour pulse. So, total rainfall which is produced a unit hydrograph is based on 4 hour rainfall. Even though the pulses are of slight different values, we can assume that it is uniformly distributed over that interval. Actually both should be of same interval, then we can tell this unit hydrograph is having a duration of 4 hours. But in actual practice, it is very difficult to get the uniform interval, to get the duration having rainfall uniformly distributed within that time interval. So, we are assuming that this is approximately fine and the ordinate and the duration of unit hydrograph can be considered as 4 hours. So, this is the way in which we will be deriving unit hydrograph based on the direct run of hydrograph. So, whenever we are going to derive a unit hydrograph for a particular catchment, we need to have the stream flow records and the corresponding rainfall data which is of uniformly distributed between certain duration. Then only we can determine the unit hydrograph of certain duration. So, these are the steps which we will be utilizing for deriving the unit hydrograph from the direct run of hydrograph. Otherwise, if you are having already idea about the duration of the direct run of hydrograph, the duration of the unit hydrograph can be considered as the same if it is produced due to single pulse. Otherwise, we have to go for deconvolution principle to develop the unit hydrograph if the direct run of hydrograph is produced due to effective rainfall having different pulses. Now, we can plot the unit hydrograph and DRH. This is the DRH which is given in the question and this is the DRH developed based on the given stream flow data and the corresponding UH unit hydrograph is the corresponding unit hydrograph is given by this plot. So, you can look at the if you look at the plot you can understand that both are having the same time base and the duration of the hydrograph unit hydrograph is found out to be 4 hours based on the effective rainfall. Now, we will move on to the next example derivation of direct run of hydrograph. If unit hydrograph is given to you how to obtain the direct run of hydrograph that is based on the discrete convolution equation. In the previous example we have made use of the principle of proportionality. Here what we will be doing we will be making use of principle of proportionality and also superposition. Let me read out the question derive the DRH from the given 3R unit hydrograph due to an effective rainfall of 2 centimeters. Also derive the DRH with ER of 2 centimeter and 3 centimeter occurring in two successive 3 hour durations each. The data given are the unit hydrograph 3 hour unit hydrograph is given to you. Time is varying from 0 to 30 hours and unit hydrograph ordinates in meter cube per second is given to you. So, for the derivation of DRH the data is again represented over here in these columns. These are given data only time in hours and unit hydrograph ordinates in meter cube per second. First what we need to do we need to find out the direct run of hydrograph corresponding to 2 centimeters of rainfall. So, we will be applying the principle of proportionality here and we will find out the response of the catchment for an effective rainfall of 2 centimeters. So, we are just multiplying the ordinates of unit hydrograph with 2 because this is unit hydrograph ordinates are the response of 1 centimeter rainfall. Here we need to find out the DRH due to 2 centimeters of rainfall just multiplying the ordinates of the UH by 2 centimeter. So, these are the data ordinates which are computed simply multiplying by making use of the principle of proportionality. So, if we plot the 2 centimeter DRH it will be like this ordinates are increased to we have multiplied the ordinates of unit hydrograph with 2, but the time base remains the same. 
because single pulse input is considered, 2 centimeters of input is considered and corresponding to that we have developed the DRH. So, the time base is not going to change. Another pulse is contributing runoff and if you are computing the total response of the catchment, then the time base will be different. Time base of the direct runoff hydrograph will be different than that of the unit hydrograph because it is a combination of two different unit hydrographs. First part is over. First part of the question was to determine the direct runoff hydrograph from 2 centimeters of effective rainfall. Second part is that 2 centimeters of effective rainfall is occurred and after that 3 centimeters of rainfall occurred with a 3 hour gap. So, we need to find out the DRH due to effective rainfall of 3 centimeters which has occurred after 3 hours. So, it will be starting after 3 hours only. So, what we have done? We have multiplied the ordinates of unit hydrograph with 3 and lagged it by that much time. So, here the lagging is done by 3 hours. So, you can see it has not started from 0 over here. It has started at a 3 hour lag. So, this is the direct runoff hydrograph corresponding to 3 centimeter. Now, we can compute the combined direct runoff hydrograph by making use of the principle of superposition. What we have done? We have added the ordinates of direct runoff hydrograph due to 2 centimeters and DRH due to 3 centimeters. So, if you are plotting the combined DRH, you can understand that the combined DRH is represented by this red graph. So, you can see the time base of the combined DRHs from 0 to 33, it is 33 hours or when we find out the combined direct runoff hydrograph, the time base will be changing. It is the combined response of the 2 centimeter effective rainfall and 3 centimeter effective rainfall. So, that is what is plotted over here. So, combined DRHs can be derived by making use of the principle of proportionality and also principle of superposition. So, various numerical examples can be obtained from these textbooks. So, here I am winding up this problem solving session. Thank you.